Welcome back to another episode of The Echo with your host, Apollo PN. And Jeffrey. And it's just the two of us today. Again. We call this rush hour. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Because it's going to be an hour. Yes, again, Katie Atu not being here. She's on vacation. Uh, second vacation in a row. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, we're working. Yeah. So you want to be Jackie Chan today and I'll be Chris Tucker? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Why? Oh my God. Yeah. Well, sure. Why? Why? Is it? Yeah, well, I got first. Okay, that I, was a perfect. That's a perfect yes. movie for for racial unity. You know that. It right? was. It was you know? all the cultural and exactly. Jackie Chan, not knowing the English. Yeah. Chris it's, Tucker not knowing the Chinese language. Yeah. The culture. Perfect duel. Yeah. Taking our martial arts and. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Taking thug martial arts to a whole new level. <laughs> The Beach Boys and all that in the radio. Remember that? No, like, I don't remember that one. No, that was like the movie scene where like like uh, they decided to trying to change the radio yeah. and you don't touch a black man's radio. Yeah. <laughs> it, so I mean, yeah. yeah. So you, we we don't touch my radio station if we were driving together, would we? Would you? I mean, I probably have the better music. So. No, you don't. No, you yeah. Don't. <laughs> all right. All right. So all right. Since we're talking about music right now. Yes. Yes. You said you have the you have the better taste of music. Yes. All right. And absolutely. you have the better. All right. So Drake just dropped the album. Certified yeah. Lover Boy. Yes, this past weekend. That's your guy. Yeah, I respect him. That's your guy. I respect him. That's yeah, your so. guy. That's your guy. You say he's you, a goat. You know what good music is. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so okay. Let's start. Yes, yeah, break this down. We're breaking down Certified Lover Boy. Okay, on the so Echo. my actual genuine thoughts. Okay, I've had a lot of emotions listening to this album, thinking about what. I actually think of it, and let me start off by saying, at first, I was kind of disappointed. Mm. And let me explain first why. Listen? Uh, first listen? First listen. Let me okay. explain why. Okay. With Certified Lover Boy, let's go back to the when it first got promoted, right? They had that trailer, you know, the kid, and then they had like the, the, the tributes to all those uh, old albums. Remember that? Mm. And the, even the name Certified Lover Boy. With, with those two clues, I was thinking, wow, maybe this album could be like a real like conceptual album because i can admit even as a drake fan like the last album scorpion was hella bloated and was strictly made for streaming numbers so i thought yes this is the album to like kind of redefine himself because some mm -hmm. people critiquing drake at the time was mm -hmm. talking about how like is he still motivated is he still passionate about the music or is he just chasing the numbers i thought that this album would be the chance certified lover boy what better way to describe himself than that you know, the perfect guy who, in the beginning, he was clowned on for being this emotional guy, talking about certain themes about love and relationships in a hip hop world where they talk, they, they talk about something else, you know? Mm -hmm. But then I should have seen the hints, man, from the Laugh Now, Cry Later music video, how like memeable that's, that song and album uh, music video was. Mm -hmm. And then the real, like, the real red flag was the album cover. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, what? Really? Like, come on. Like, I thought it was a joke because I know it was a whole play on the whole nine months and the late and the labor weekend being when it was released and stuff. But I, st I still was like, okay, hopefully this kid, the music can prove me wrong. And in terms of like a collective of music as an album, like what albums are typically supposed to be, it wasn't really what I expected. I wanted a more focused and serious album. Now, it wasn't as bloated as Scorpion, and it was still way better than Scorpion. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get the conceptual deep album that I wanted. Someone to redefine and like be super motivated. I didn't get that. You wanted a conceptual album from Drake. Yes. Did Drake ever give us a conceptual album? Well, even think about it. Views was technically a concept album. Was it really? At, at least the way he he at least he tried for it. Certified Lover Boy was definitely like there was a lot of R and B songs, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like a full like narrative in the way I wanted it to be. And I guess after I got over that disappointment, when I looked into the songs, first of all, the production was great. Mm -hmm. um, but, and a lot of, like I said before, a lot of R&B songs, but I thought overall the songs were very good. So these are just, this is a, I just see this project as a collection of good songs. So do I don't know how you, how do you shit on an album and then say it's a collection of good songs? Like, so it's good, but it's but, not like, I wanted you don't a, like it? The ma no, I like it. I but, like it. So it's not, what is it, Drake? What is it? What is it, man? I, I like the album. I mean, I like the, I like the songs. Okay. I just thought it could have been executed in a way that was more like thematic. Mm -hmm. Certified Lover Boy, there was like some song, like I found some themes from the album were not just about like, yeah. like being a lover boy. It was also about trust issues, yep. right? There's a lot of songs where he was just talking about like how like, keeping the family closer mm -hmm. and like obviously also in relation to the Kanye 
I think, for example, that was it 7 a.m. in Bridal Path. Yeah. Um, Bridal Path was a direct. I think that song was just created after um, the whole Kanye re- leaking Drake's address. Yeah. And th- those were his shots after. Well, it must have been the 20 bars he was working on. Yeah. Before he submitted the album. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. It, it wasn't, it's not a con- concrete focused album. Mm-hmm. It's just a collection of like whatever he was making over the past like year. Right, yeah. Because there were some songs that, like, there were two songs that I actually heard a while back, at least a year ago, because they were leaked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sue, Tia, the that song. Yeah. So it he, it's just a collection of songs that I think he was just making at the moment that he was making the song, but in terms of like a focused, I guess, um, lost focus or something. But, but then you know, some people would say like he's never even showed that in the past few years that he wouldn't want to make that album. I guess that was me creating this narrative based off the way it was promoted, yeah. especially with the heart. He wore like the heart on his head. Like clearly, like if people people usually do that type of uh, promoting, it means that there's like some kind of theme. You think of the weekend and after hours. He wore that whole suit for a whole year because he was promoting a certain theme. Well, the theme was still love, though. Yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah. But that's. I mean, that's just a very basic like that's like a topic i think that there's so many different angles you could talk about relationships whether it's like i was thinking maybe he could talk about how like what it's like to be a father and then what does what he really wants in a partner so you had an idea and he didn't execute your idea so you're upset (laughs) a little bit on that but then once i got over that like again the songs were good like there was no bad songs i don't think i don't agree with people calling it mid like some people are like oh that's mid 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 all over like I'll be honest, like academics page and shit, they're calling it mid. I don't think it was mid because I don't think he's, he has a standard of music where it won't be shit, but it, it didn't like wow me. And I will I, say before Apollo goes, you mentioned like the numbers, yeah. it worked because as you know, he got the most streams on Spotify in a day. So he yeah. did what he had to do. He did what he had to do. And I guess, I guess we can talk about this later, but we can talk about what does it mean toward Drake's legacy in the future of Drake? Do people, like the numbers really define who he is and his how great of an artist he is or not, you know? Yes. I think Drake's career has been based off numbers. Been He's yeah. been living on the charts like he raps about for the past 10 years. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh Overall, about the album, I walked into this album not really expecting because uh, what to expect because I was coming off the, the the Tar Heels of Donda album by Kanye West, which I really enjoyed and it grew on me. Uh, it hit me in a spiritual way. Uh, coming into Certified Lover Boy, I did not know what to expect. People were up late waiting for it, so it dropped around like two a.m. Mm-hmm. and it had the internet on fire up until even right now. Uh, overall, my opinion on it, I, I like the album. My personal opinion, I liked the album. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's a nice playthrough. I think this is, um, in terms of the formula that Drake puts out with every music and every album, I think this is his uh, per- perfected uh, form. This is his perfected form in terms of just how he was able to make the album so cohesive, the songs blend into one another, uh, and how you're able to have like a seamless musical experience through Certified Lover Boy that's brought to you by Drake. I could say one song I really don't like that much is uh, Too Sexy. Once you get to oh, Young Thug's verse, I already, yeah, <laughs> Young Thug's verse was kind of like, yeah, kind of boo boo. That song was strictly made for like the memes though, and like yeah. him being like viral, yeah. I guess that because that music video was ridiculous. <laughs> Had co- featured Kawhi Leonard's "Emotionless," yeah, the Jodeci dancing, yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> um, but I think he, there was several moments where he deliberately tried to say things or show things to make himself viral. I think the whole lesbian line, yeah. if you. <laughs> Girls like, like girls in my city. Yeah, I think that's the name of the, the, the song. No, it's the, called Girls Want Girls. Girls, girls want says, girls. She says she's lesbian, and I said, "Girl, me too." Something like that. Yeah, girl, yeah. me too. Yeah, a. yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> there were definitely a lot of like viral uh, memes from that uh, line because that is, and that's also the girl. Oh, girl wants girls. That's also another uh, mostly st- uh, most stream album. It was Spotify. the most stream song on the yeah. Yeah, album, which yeah. again, yeah, like, LGBT. Q TikTok is all over it. Like Drake, do you, well. Have you guys seen those um, memes of BBL Drake? BBL Drake. BBL Drake. <laughs> Please that, elaborate. Drake with a BBL. Whole, well, you know when all of a sudden he came out, he was just buff like years ago. Yeah. Everyone said he got a BBL, so that has taken it far. But you know that photo he posted in the mirror with the like sweater on, and he was looked kind of a little fruity. 
Do you guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> nope. I do not know no, what you're talking about. No, I need to show Apollo so he knows. But anyways, so yeah, they, people have made like memes of that, of him just looking feminine. And there's like a gay lookalike of Drake too. Yeah. Yo, so there's, there's like, there type is. in BBL Drake on TikTok or even on Google. Maybe I'll show up. But I'm going to like come give you guys I'm a see, I'm seeing a Drake with a Brazilian yeah. butt lift. On no, no, no. He just looks super like feminine. Oh. So that with the girls want girls is like a whole thing. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think that's the only way you can react to a line like that. I think. Yeah. He, uh, I mean, he's just saying he likes girls, but. But that doesn't make, I mean, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I so. know, yeah. But, <laughs> but like with this album. It's not that deep. Yeah. But with, the, with this album, with Certified Love Boy, I think in typical Drake fashion, he. He holds the chip on his shoulder and he, you know, expresses it through the music. He got a Kanye West, most famously. We could dive into that. He got yes. a Swiss Beats, most famously. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, and some people say he got a Charlemagne with the lemon face. Lemon face, I saw but that. I'm not too. quite sure. When, I, when he said lemon face, I'm not quite sure. Is he? Does he mean lemon face in terms of Charlemagne's face always looks sour? Because he doesn't, Charlemagne's not like yeah. Asian. Well, people were talking about kind of, didn't Charlemagne have that thing about like skin lightning or... Something but like, like that. why would you call him lemon face though? True, that's. I true. mean, it, the radio. Who's the who's the who is known as a bitter radio host for a period of time, which is Charlemagne. Charlemagne, right? yeah. I'd also consider Old Man Ebro a bitter uh, radio host as well. Yeah. But I don't think Drake is per se talking about. Um, he does have beef with Hot ninety seven though. I think to this day still. To this day. Yeah. What's the beef with Hot ninety seven? Is the whole over the whole uh, Blackberry thing that he's rapping with Funk Master uh, Flex? Yeah, I think Funk Flex. He's like, yo, this guy rapping off his phone. Yeah. This, that, and the yeah. third. Is that what he is? I, th it was something like that. I remember yeah. that. But yeah, uh, yeah I th but the thing is with Charlemagne, I feel like they've, they've like, they kind of ended that beef a little bit in 2016. Remember? The, the thing that I feel like the beef ended when he said, I'm going to buy Char bottles for Charlemagne. Yes. And he actually bought bottles for Charlemagne. Yeah, because I, th I thought at this point, like, Drake needs to understand that, like, Charlemagne, he's just going to be blunt. That's yeah. his radio show, you know? Oh, yeah, but the thing is, uh, a few months ago, was it this year or maybe the ending of last year, he was saying that uh, it was Little Baby season. Little Baby's the hottest artist of the era. Oh. The Drake era is over. It's Little Baby oh, era. Yeah, I remember Because that. of what? Uh, a lot. Because the thing is, Little Baby appeals to a lot of the younger crowd, right? And Drake is more of a... Uh, He's ushering. He ushered in the older crowd. And he's mm -hmm. also oversees a lot of the younger crowd. But, like, as you, in terms of, like, who's hot for the younger kids... Little baby. A lot of people go like little baby is the next up. But like I would even argue and say like there's certain other artists that are bigger and more hotter than Little Baby. It's just Little Baby speaks to the streets. And Drake I wouldn't necessarily call Drake a street rapper. Well, he was never a street rapper, but oh. there was a part of him that was able to speak to both the streets and the pop culture. Uh sense of its affiliations, right? Yeah. Just kinda like who he, I like to say like obviously he isn't from mm. the he doesn't live that life, but mm. he has that like mob mentality, like mm. kind of like the boss man. Yeah. And he knows people, like whether yeah. it's Chicago or whatnot. Yeah. So. All right. So, like, he's, he, the beef with him and Kanye West, yeah. I went up a notch, I went up in a big notch. Uh, he well, he attacked, uh, where he addressed Kanye West in uh, 7 a.m. Is it 7 a.m. on the bridal 7 a.m. on bridal path. On bridal path. Yes. And he, you know, he talked about the fact that Kanye West posted his address on. Um, on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, he also spoke on the fact that you're top three and you're slowly sliding down. Mm -hmm. You know, he so he's getting at if he's getting at Kanye West saying that he's he was up there, but his his reign and his his, his legacy and his, his his quality of music is going down. And also, like he mentioned, like the people turning his back on him. You yeah. know, I mean, the first of all, though, the Kid Cudi feature yeah. threw me off. The Jay Z the threw me off too. Well, oh, Jay Z, yeah. Well, Jay Z collaborated on both albums. Yeah, right? he they both features. Yeah, which 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 and Cudi did like? too, didn't he? Wasn't um, Cudi on Donda? I can't remember. Was Cudi on Donda? He wasn't on Donda. All right, then I'm wrong then. Yeah, but I, I can't. Like, I I, I, I can't believe Cudi was on that album because didn't Drake say the whole like you were the man on the moon? Now you go just going through your phases. Oh, wasn't Thug on Don Donda too? Thugga was on Donda too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the whole Kid Cudi thing was, I remember the drama because, like, people were going at Drake because... Oh, he's on Moon. Sorry. He is. He, he is on Moon? Yeah. I was right. Okay, yeah. I was right. He's on Moon. I was right. <laughs> Fuck. You made me feel like I was wrong, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't listen to Donda. It's with Don Tolliver. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. I forgot. Yeah. You All forgot. that humming. You forgot. All that damn humming, bro. I'm not even a Cudi fan. I do. Yeah, I didn't like yeah. that. I'm not a big fan. Also, Dirk was on Donda as well. Yeah. Yeah, hey yeah. yo, what the f is going on? There was a lot. There's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of uh, like crossover. Well, do you believe artists are supposed to pick a side? Uh, nah, I mean no. 
Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, you, it's for the money, right? Yeah, you don't. Because Lil Baby was on both projects too, right? True. Yeah, he was on both projects. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and actually, people were talking about Lil Baby got the biggest W of the weekend because yeah. I mean, he got two of the biggest albums. Yeah. And Jay Z. To be honest, a lot of those artists that were on Certified Lover Boy and they're on Donda, they got big looks this past two weeks in terms of like. Yo, what they could do? I think it's. I wish Fabio was on Survive Lover Boy at this point. Yeah, well, he was on the um, the demo like, tapes. Remember that's yeah with the what was it called? Demons. Demons. Yeah, yeah Fabio. Yeah. yeah, but I just think that like a lot of these artists. I think this is just a beef between them too. Yeah. So it's very personal. Yeah, and okay, and so that beef escalated a little bit more when Drake leaked a uh, diss song that Kanye wrote towards Drake. Mm -hmm. On his um, XF, XM radio or what? Uh, yeah, his uh, Sirius XM. Sirius XM radio. OVO sound radio, yeah. yes. Yeah. And that's in that radio, in that song, Kanye West is claiming GD. Mm. GD's talking about he's going, he wants to address Drake in a very aggressive manner. He's getting his like cocky, arrogant bag, and then he a lot. He also got Andre three thousand on the track. Yes, which Andre three thousand was like, hey, hey, <laughs> you know, I have nothing which, to do with this. Which a lot of artists do that because like when you do, well, like say, um, how many people do this? Like when artists are on a song that address like a, a, a issue with someone else, it kind of shows that they're co-signing yes. the diss, right? Yeah, because that's the same reason why uh, Pusha T took himself off of um, Pop Smoke's album last year because he was. He was dissing Drake on it and yeah. thought one of no parts. He was like, hey, bro, I don't want no parts of that. You yeah. know? And that happens all the time. Uh, a lot of rappers get into beasts because they get, um, I guess, they hit with a stray bullet mm -hmm. or they're in the crossfire of some bullshit. But, like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think it was, his name's Consequence. Consequence, yeah. Yeah, he was kind of responding back, kind of like, we're going to find the mole who uh, kind of, like, leaked it to Drake. Mm -hmm. And people are also joking, around, this is the... The, vi the funny thing would be is if he was the mole, you know? Yeah, it would be funny if he was the mole. <laughs> <laughs> it would be funny. But the thing is, like, why would Drake leak that uh, diss record towards him and people honestly listening to it and claiming that is, like, the best song that came out of the whole Donda beef. project, yeah. Not even the Donda project. It's, like, the the, beef? the, the rivalry before, between both of them. Oh, the rivalry, yeah. Like, are you, is Kanye West going to address it? I don't think he, uh, I don't think he has. I don't, yeah, he hasn't responded yeah. since he, the last thing he set, stated was about how, like, that album wasn't supposed to be released yeah. at the time it did really get released. So, is Drake gonna follow up with, like, his own personal disc record? I mean, like, well, 7 a.m. was pretty, there was quite a few bars for him. It was pretty, like, I mean, even in the name, yeah. On Bridal Path, like, that's literally directing the whole, yeah. uh, referencing the whole leak thing, so. Hmm. And then Consequence released a diss track too. Yeah, he's talking about he was talking greasy on it. I didn't get to hear it, but he was allegedly talking greasy on it, saying he's gonna touch uh, Drake's. Ba talk about baby mama yeah, and yeah. parents and yeah. Mm. I don't know how OVO Chubb's gonna feel about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it's gonna escalate though? You think this is actually you think it's gonna get physical? I doubt it's gonna get physical. We're talking about Kanye West and Drake, man. These guys have massive entourages, massive mm -hmm. security. These guys are never gonna be in the same place at the same time in terms of like casually walking past each other. I don't think it's very godly of Kanye to come to part of this uh, conflict. Like, just the fact that <laughs> You think, you think, because what happened was that he addressed the beef, right? Yeah. You said they're earlier this year, allegedly, they were supposed to meet up mm -hmm. and squash the beef. Drake never came and the beef got reunited and now here we are. Kanye West and Drake are back at it again because they're trying to, well, I guess people got it in between them, middlemen. Got in between them and tried to squash it. These guys shouldn't be beefing, but they're beefing. Well, I, I think it's both both of these individuals have big eagles. Yeah. It's going to take a lot for them to actually be like, I'm sorry for my actions or mm. whatnot. So I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. All right. In terms of like sales. Yes. Uh, that's a big part of this. So Kanye West, I think he ended off his uh, week. He dropped on a Sunday, yes. a holy Sunday. And he ended off selling about what? 315, uh, 315. Numbers in terms of you want to bring yeah. up the numbers. Yeah, uh, Danae, you want to fact check me? Fact check all these. Yeah. Yeah, I was just searching up the Peppa Pig thing. Did you guys see that? What the hell? Oh, oh the with the pitchfork. Yeah. Oh, maybe. having a better rating than Donda. You know uh, what? You know what the thing is? I I was listening to uh, I was listening to a YouTuber and they're like, it's that's that's more semantics 
Because you don't rate a Pepper a Pig album the same way you would rate a uh, yeah. a Donda album or Kanye, music from Don, uh, Kanye West. You rate it on a different scale, right? So if Pepper Pig puts on an album and you don't look highly of Pepper Pig and it sounds pretty decent to your expectations, then it's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to give it this. Mm -hmm. But Kanye West, you hold him to a different pedestal. So whatever type of music he puts out, you're going to hold it to a different uh, scale. So Pepper Pig getting a, um, a higher rating, that's more of a... So, and that's not really yeah, I mean that's the, the thing even that's with more for fluff for the internet that's what even the critique of Fantano's reviews are like because of the fact that he has different scales and then they compare like how is like uh, two, uh, no My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy the same rating as like a Lil Yachty album or something yeah. like that you can't it, it's a different yeah. scale it's a different criteria different yeah. uh, expectations as yeah. you've mentioned so yeah, so people don't even understand that it's just more so for like you know some semantic stuff. I, yeah, actually, I was going to ask you a question because you said you liked that the album. I did like so. so I like what are some of them. your favorite songs? I want Certified Lover Boy. Yeah. All right. I like. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Do, like, do you like the R and B hits first of all? Or? No, no. To be honest, I like Drake rapping. I've you always like, liked Drake rapping. You like Drake rapping more. So uh, I'm gonna go. Do you want me to name the songs to uh, jog the memory? Pardon me. Do you want me to name the songs? I think with the champagne the poetry. Intro? Pardon? Champagne poetry. So the first song. Champagne poetry. Yeah, Poppy's I like that. home. Pardon Girls, me? Poppy's home. No, nah, not really. Poppy's home. Girls want girls. Yeah, I like girls like girls. In the Bible. No, not really. Love all with Jay Z. Uh, yeah. Fair like trade it. with Travis Scott. Yeah. Way too yeah. sexy. No. <laughs> T S U. I don't know. Uh that's the one. With, no. That's the one that leaked. We all. Not yeah. around. Yeah, that song. Yeah. 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 Oh, she. Her, yeah, her. What? Her dad's not He's around. He's falling in love with a stripper. Yeah. yeah. In oh, too deep. Typical Drake fashion. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. In too deep with future. Yeah, that's cool. Pipe mm -hmm. down. Pipe, yeah. Yabba's heartbreak. No. That was an interlude. That's no account. friends in the industry is that's, like a performance. That's, that's, that's a good one. one. That's, he's, yeah. he's talking shit on that one. 21 yeah. Savage, Knife Talk. Yeah, that's another one. Uh -huh. 7 a.m., Bridal Path. Race yeah, My Mind. One. No. Fountain with Thames. It's really good. Oh, that's good, yeah. 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 Um, oh, well, Get Along Better. I honestly don't even remember listening to Get Along to Better. Uh, that's the one with Ty Dolla Sign. Yeah. Really on. He's really on it. You Only Live Twice. Yeah. This track's hard. You only live twice. Little Wayne and Rick Ross. Yeah, that, yes. man, that's fire. That's yeah. fire too. I miss you too with Kid Cudi. No, nah, not really. No. Nah. <laughs> Fucking fans. No, nah, not really. And <laughs> the remorse. The remorse. I think it's a good outro. Yeah. The remorse. That's yeah. a typical, yeah. like, kind of his last thoughts. Typical Drake closer. I, I think overall, the album, like I said, yes, the most of the album, right? Yeah. The album's good. It's a good album. He made some really good songs. I thought for. Um, you mentioned the 21 Savage song. That was definitely like his song, like for example. And then even the Thames song, I feel like that was Thames song. And then Drake was just on there as well. So there was a few songs like that on that album. But then yeah. you could say that, that's make that same argument for uh, Donda. Yeah. You know what one thought song I thought it was going to be on the album as a bonus track? What? Laugh Now, Cry Later. Yes. I thought that would be on there as a bonus track. You know what? what you know when Drake was doing the promotions where he had like going to different cities and mm -hmm. saying like this person's on the album? Mm -hmm. I thought the Lil Dirt feature was going to be the Laugh Now, Cry Later. Yeah. Didn't expect another song. Yeah. Which is, he, he promoted his girlfriend on there. Uh, what's it called? India Comedics? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know Drake does a lot of streams. I'm just promoting my bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I respect. Yo, that, that was a hard line, man. Wait, speaking of uh, calling out someone or pretend, like, did you hear the whole Ruby Rose story? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Ruby Rose thought Drake was talking about her, right? Yeah, and there's a yes. whole video. She yeah. listened to it two times and her all her friends were hyping her up and he was talking about a watch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she, she does not know how to read lyrics, man. All right. Yeah. All right. So I I I kind of got distracted. I want to talk about sales. So sale numbers for Donda was like three uh three fifteen k. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. Drake's on pace to do about six twenty five k. Yeah. Wow. Which he may do over that the way things are with Drake the album. Mm hmm. Uh, overall, what do you think numbers are actually mean? Something in terms of like quality of music and, and diversity, yeah. the diversity of, of I guess overall legacy because drake kind of put out the same kind of music his whole career yes kanye west he he switched things up yeah i kind of listened to a lot of different people's thoughts to help clear my mind too because this project was just another example and it kind of solidified what i was trying to say before in terms of this not being the most conceptual album. because mm -hmm. when you really think about it there were a lot of viral like memeable hits you know mm -hmm. those songs are going to do very well on the numbers mm -hmm. because of the certain things whether it's the funny line of the lesbian line or the ridiculousness of that music video for too sexy 
I, I, I think it's impressive, obviously, because mm -hmm. no one else is doing those numbers, right? Yeah. So that you have to give him props. Now, do, where, do you, where do you see him as an artist? You can also critique, many critiques say like, that's where the motivation is lacking, you know? Because he can make these formulaic, and that's how some people say, uh, critique the music. It's very formulaic and for the charts. Yeah. Where's the creative originality? Where's the, the hunger that um, got Drake into the industry to begin with? Because when he first came on, mm -hmm. he was hungry. He was trying to prove something. Is he still trying to prove something right now? Uh, yeah, I think Drake is always trying to prove something. I think it's even harder. Uh, it's. I think it's harder to do both. It's harder to stay on the charts and consistently have a formula that works. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also hard to come up with like a, uh, a conceptual album that actually touches the people and and, and solidifies your name in a, in a particular type of way. So what Kendrick does, Drake can't do. And what Drake does, Kendrick can't do. You know what I mean? I also think it does match their personalities. I think mm -hmm. one thing that like some people say is like someone like Kendrick, he's go he's going away for a few months and yeah. then he pops out of nowhere where he it kind of like shocks you like, "Oh, Kendrick's back." Drake's name is always on the headlines. Yeah. He's just like he's always releasing something every year. And if he's not releasing something, he's got singles mm -hmm. or he's just like on the news for a random story. Yeah. Whether it's his involvement with the Raptors or yeah. just some other random stuff. So Yeah, he, he lives the rapper lifestyle in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. But I think Jeff's point was good because did you guys hear that line where he's like, I'm actually Michael Jackson? Like, yes. Song, but he knows, Man in the mirror. You know? Yeah, like he knows he's. No, no, no. This is on Certified Lover Boy. Yeah, no. Yeah. But yeah, he I think he knows that he doesn't really need to try anymore. Like he has the numbers, he has the fans, type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Jake is up there. Yeah. He's the he's the six guard. He's the boy. Right. So and I guess well the age matters too. And and then you're talking about the next generation as well, the little babies and mm -hmm. all the other artists. Like at his age right now, I think to be like one of those like more respected artists in the industry mm -hmm. you got to still have something that like people can say like wow like uh you're still changing something you're still like evolving your sound did you feel like he was really experimental or really really trying something new in this project i think he just his delivery got more, a lot more crisp his production is more crisp mm -hmm. i think he's just refining what's already good he already has the formula right why, why change up something that works right yeah, I guess that's the debate with music in general. People are always pushing for like their favorite artists to like step out of their comfort zone yeah. and whatnot. I think like for example, he there was some songs where he really incorporated auto tune. Um, I don't know if you noticed even like the the fair trade song mm -hmm. or with the one with Travis Scott. Like that was a very catchy, cool song. But then other times, like again, I mentioned the Twenty One Savage song because that was literally Twenty One Sound being plopped on Certified Lover Boy. For yeah. example, it's like when Drake hopped on. Um uh, what's that called? Uh, what a time to be alive, and it was mostly future songs, but he just hopped on those and he was kind of like weaving his way through the 808 beats and not trying to, you know, get squashed with the the, the production. Mm -hmm. No, I guess with this conversation, I I like to ask, like, where do you think Drake goes from here? Like, what does this solidify? What does this say? Ten years from now, we look at that album cover. Yeah. We look at that album. What does this say? I think we're gonna. It's gonna be nostalgic. I think we're gonna look at look back at it and go like, "Oh, ha ha ha!" It was a nostalgic album cover, and it, it just it, it it's a time capsule of a sort. Really, you know, the same way how "Take Care" is a time capsule for a lot of those kids that were in university or like later leaving high school and going through those like those heartbreaks and trying to figure out hmm. life. How that is like a time capsule of their that particular life in time in their life. It's saying how certified lover boy is like most music. Like you, you listen to you might listen to, let's say Kendrick Lamar's first album for people who like Kendrick Lamar. You might listen to his first album, uh, Good Kid, Mad City, and you just remember what your life was like at that particular time. Mm -hmm. and you know that album cover, what that meant for you, this, that particular song, what that meant for you. The same thing with certified lover boy. You know what it is? I, I think the reason why I'm saying all this is the fact that like as a Drake fan, mm -hmm. if I'm going to talk about this project, it's hard to defend hit the seriousness mm -hmm. when you have all the, even the album cover the way it is, it's kind of hard to take him seriously as a real artist. Okay. So and, to put a button on the certified uh, lover boy topic, we both like it? Yeah, I like it for what it is. It's a good album? It's a good album. Is it, it a classic? No. I don't think it's a classic. I think, this is just really him solidifying the fact that he's going to do whatever it takes to get the, the best numbers. All the, right. As the master troll with all the music, the, 
the the music videos, the lines. He's just out here to get be viral. All right, and he still can. Yeah, certified lover boy. It's a certified song album. Certified album. <laughs> certified album. I fuck with it though. I like it. All right. So in other news, in terms of uh, you know things going on in the world, we have someone that represents the Asians in a great way. Hey, hey, hey. Take it away, Jeff. Yes. Oh, my God. Who's your Asian superhero? So, Shang-Chi and the... Fuck, I forgot the rest of the name of the... Oh, you <laughs> fucked up. You fucked up. It was your turn to put Hold the Asians on, on you. Shout out Back to Shang-Chi. Hold on. The, it's like the, the, the Ten Rings or something. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I believe that's the night. I went to watch it opening day. Yes, you're day. correct. Yes, yeah. exactly. Fantastic movie. Are you a fan of the Marvel series, first of all? I am a fan of Marvel. Yes. My, uh, favorite, my favorite superhero is Spider-Man. Spider-Man, like the, the the Spider-Man we have now? Like the Tom Ma- McGuire. Oh, oh. I like, but I like Spider-Man. That I watched, I started watching Spider-Man from the animated series back in the 90s. Right. So I like that. But w- what's his name again? The the current Tom, Spider-Man. Tom, Tom, Tom Holland, Holland, right? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's uh, currently booed up with Zendaya. Yes, you know. from the movie, who also stars in that movie. But yeah, like I guess this is kind of their new ramp of new superheroes that yeah. they're introducing because they killed off half of them in yeah. <laughs> The Last Avengers. Um, and Shang-Chi was a big moment. Shout out to Simu Liu. And he's a Canadian. He was starring on the show Kim's Convenience. And he did a tweet. He was posting something around like, hey, Marvel, where's, my Shang- where's the Shang-Chi movie? And a few years later... He's got that blockbuster mu- uh, movie. Uh, the numbers are going crazy. It's the the biggest um, labor weekend uh, movie of all time yeah. in terms of numbers. Do you, th- uh, you think uh, the, the Asian community is coming out the same way the black community came out for Black Panther? Um, I, I believe in California where a lot of the Asian communities are, mm-hmm. it's big. They had the whole red carpet and like the crazy turnout. I personally did not get to get that experience because... Around me were just white people, mm, mm, and mm, mm, mm. they just be watching just because they're watching. They don't understand the significance. So the answer is no, because the black people turned out. Yeah, I know. Black, black people came for Black in, Panther. Yeah, in dashikis for some reason. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see the black man come to the movie in dashiki? Yeah, I, th- I actually went to the um, the premiere because you're a black man. Of He's a black man. <laughs> Yeah, yes, black man. Hold I on, are Asi- are Asians coming out in the traditional ch- uh, Chinese Chinese role in garb? I don't think so. Actually, I haven't looked into this in depth, but apparently people in China do not like the movie. People in China do not like the movie. I mean, I, I figured. Yeah. They don't like Western world things. Yeah, or their representation of what ancient Chinese is. But for me, I got to say, that movie was amazing for Asian representation because I grew up watching like those ancient Chinese films with my parents mm-hmm. and like with the whole, the long hair, the horses and just like the everything. And it's seeing it on the big screen with like a, a legendary actor like Tony Lu, uh, Luang, uh, Luang, whatever his name is. Fuck, <laughs> we can't pronounce Tony it. Tony Lau? No, it's Leung, L-E-U-N-G. He's like an iconic Hong Kong uh, actor. Okay. And seeing things like that is really cool for representation. The fact that the next generation of Asian kids get to see a superhero yeah. is amazing. Representation matters, right? Yeah, man. And you know what the thing is? The, act, the director of that uh, movie was talking about how they were specifically trying to break the stereotypes. For example, Simu's character, he was playing a guy who wasn't the most smart educated or smart person he was a valet driver mm-hmm. right kind of breaking the stereotype that we as Asians have to always be these studious hardworking, smart people you know and even just like the way they represented China in the um, when they went to the ancient China I thought it was kind of very true to how ancient China is supposed to be very traditional with a lot of symbolic meaning um, a lot of respect. I think they really took the time to do their research on uh, ancient China. So. All right. Well, that being said, you know, uh, Sh- what, Shang-Chi? Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. Uh, the one of the masculine, more uh, dominating looking Asian, the help uh, Asian representation yeah. out there in the media, allowing for Asian men to look strong. Facts. In front of the white man and the, uh, and the woman's. Yeah. But China itself is actually banning sissy masculinity. 
Yes. Which, which means they don't want, they want, because you know what? Historically, Asians really do have like a sissy masculinity uh, representation in the media. Yes. They make you guys look weak. Yep. They say that your gonads are small mm -hmm. and immature. Mm hmm. And, um, <laughs> gonads. That's a new one. <laughs> they, they, they classify Asian as dorky, geeky. Yes. Uh, dweebs. Yep. Uh, it's uh, true. Physically, in, uh, physically in inept. Yeah. Uh, it's it just to be honest, they really they really shit on you Asian people in the media. Absolutely, man. I and affected even me growing up, man. I didn't even feel that that I could be that strong of a man because of shit like that. Mm -hmm. It was either like the weak ass males or the freaking um like the kung fu movies, like you mentioning Rush Hour. Like it was either one or the other. Yeah. So we had those things to battle growing up, and then we're like confused growing up. We don't have any representation. Yeah. As a man that's uh, part Chinese, like how do you feel about China, the country banning sissy masculinity? What's that saying? What does that say about what does that say about china and their views on men in that country china has a lot of problems yeah. <laughs> in the way they perceive things i find that very fascinating because i know that chinese reality tv shows they have a lot of kind of what they call those sissy masculine men in terms of that like i don't want to just say the k-pop look because people outside k-pop do look like that they have the fair skin and the the long hair they might even wear makeup you know and it's just kind of, I think it's, especially in times like this, it's become fetishized. Like that look mm -hmm. and that style is mm -hmm. something that now all Asian men try to chase. What? Oh, 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 what? Well, not all Asian men, but a lot. Are you telling me men fetishize the, the looking of the, well, the look he, and the appearance the, the, of look uh, feminine? Well, here's the thing. Why do the men do that? Well, they're embracing that now because, let me explain. So we, as Asians, typically were never seen as attractive because of the things we were talking well, about. Well, Asian men or women? Or men. Right? We're talking okay. about men. Okay. And now, look I don't at think, the... I don't think it's not because you're not, you guys are not attractive. I think it's because well, the stereotypes put on... Well, that adds to it, yeah. right? That adds to the attractability yeah. of the Asian male. Uh -huh. um, but now, like... K-pop just, at least in my eyes, boomed out of nowhere mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the Western world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's these, what people call like these pretty boys, like freaking mm -hmm. with the long hairs and the, the makeup and stuff. And now that's seen as attractive. So now it seems to be the trend that people are going for the specific bowl haircuts, you know? I see that everywhere. You go to Pacific Mall, like 9 out of 10 Asian men are looking like that. Isn't that place closed down now? No, Pacific Mall's still open. Fuck, It's man. still open. They just don't sell the freaking counterfeit shit anymore. Oh, wow. <laughs> that but, was the plug. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was the plug. Yeah, it was the plug, yeah. All right, so uh, I guess China is going to try to breed a, uh, a whole new representation of strong, masculine men that are Chinese descent. Yeah. And I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Please elaborate. Why? <laughs> <laughs> what? They, so they you say, agree with they, they, what they're bending? Yeah, they, no, uh, oh. no, 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 no. See, see, okay, see what happens. Here we go. I was already, I was answering his question, and then <laughs> you came in. Nowhere? Yeah, but like, no, I'm, I'm, I like in a country that was like, you know what? Our men are looking emasculated, they're looking sissified, and we. <laughs> is that is that a derogatory word? <laughs> is, is that is that a, is that a derogatory word? <laughs> Please explain more. Like is that is that, is that a derogatory word? So wait, why why do you why do you, so uh, no one's answering your question, bro? <laughs> I don't. I think it's just on the extreme, but I don't. <laughs> I don't think it's actually bad. All right, it's just a little. But explain yeah. why a little spicy. <laughs> explain why you think it's a good idea that the Chinese government are is doing this. No, I like because you know what they say that. Because, like you said, historically in the media, you guys yes. are looked, you guys are deemed and looked as physically inept, uh, masculinity uh, masculinity on an all time low. You know, sexually you you don't turn women on. Wow. Okay. First of all, <laughs> this guy said what? really said that for the camera in front of my face. What? I'm just second, saying, women, women second, historically online say, well, Yo, Asian men don't turn me on. Well, that's they got a small gonads. That's okay. First of all, yes, and I live my whole life thinking that. I'm saying, I know that. So you already know the struggle. I know the struggle. I'm for, saying when we have when you when when a nice when a strong Asian man hits the scene, you know, dick swinging. Pause. Okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. And he's able to and he's able to be like a gallus of some sort. Like, hey, let me explain. Let me define one thing first and foremost. Okay. That sounds really the, pause worthy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. But okay. You understand what I mean? Okay. What, what you're talking about with terms of the stereotypes? You have to remember that's the Asian American experience. Okay. In China, they don't subscribe to okay. any of that. In fact, they actually think of them as manly and males and strong because they're the ones who are are dominating on the world stage. They're the one who
who are invading countries like uh, Taiwan and Hong Kong and the, the way they are, like that's, that's, their agenda is different from the Asian American agenda. So maybe when they see more of uh, kind of the K-pops and all that, then they are offended by what they are pushing and they are trying to push a certain type of male, which okay. I, I mean, you're, clearly you're saying that that's okay. You think that that's the idea that a government can restrict and tell you how you have to act as a male? Is that what you're agreeing with? Because that's what they're doing. They're going, basically, if you don't subscribe to this, like, you know, it's China. It's not like a North America where there's going to be fair, mm -hmm. right to fair trial. Like, mm -hmm. there's real consequences. You could literally die. So, man, so you wake up in the morning, you, you man the f*** up. <laughs> you, explain how you man up in your you eyes. You just wake up and you man up. That's what you no, do. no, explain. Like, what does man up mean? You let your nuts hang, my guy. Wow. That's what, you, that's what it is. You let your dick drag. That's what being a man is. You, man, you wake up, you let your nuts hang, boy. That's what it is. That's what it is. Can you expand on that? Yeah, that's what I, I'm I, trying to get at. To be honest, if you understand, if you know, you know. Okay, so I'm not gonna understand. No, you're not gonna understand. Okay. But like you, my terminology for people who, who hear that, they're gonna go like, "Hey, I know exactly what he's talking about." For okay. People who don't know my terminology, they'll be like, "I'm." Lost. So what, so what do you think about Jeff right now? Because huh? he doesn't understand you. Well, yeah. So, so what do you what do you call the other people? Like, if, I'm not quite sure who's the other. Like, okay, so you're clearly now making restrictions of what it is to be male. I, well, I just not, said, I just are you said calling you dumb up, woman? I just, I just say you wake up and you man up. You let your nuts hang. You let your dick drag. So someone from, say, Korea, who has that, you know, the mm -hmm. feminine look that people kind of push. Like, hey, you, you look like a freaking chick or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you say to the, what do you, how, what do you, how are you telling them to man up? Like, what are the steps to be a man in their eyes? Or are they men? They're letting it, if they're letting the nuts hang and the dick drag, then he doesn't man. know what he's saying. It's okay. Yeah, he yeah. Just, okay. Well, hold on. I, if, I, I was trying. Think about there's men, there's guys, there's black guys, there's white guys, there's there's, there's uh, Arab guys that all have long hair, all look you know nice in the face and, and pretty and, and nice soft features at some time. I'm not gonna. They don't. They don't look less of a man. It's just because you guys have a bad stereotype on you. That's your rap. You guys have a bad rap to begin with. Well, okay. it's the same as the black woman. It's just the same thing, like known yeah. as being for like aggressive and more masculine, not yeah. feminine. Even if she saw, you, yeah, you guys just have a bad rap at the moment. So you guys, need, you guys need to promote a lot of those LA uh, Chinese gangsters. So, but, yeah, so that should be the representation of the typical Asian man. You guys for like a decade or two. Yeah, but now like you, people. <sighs> yeah, look, I'm just I'm from China Mac. Respectfully. Sh yo, shout out to China Mac. Shout out to China Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, but I think what the problem is... is and China Mac is the type of guy who mans up, wakes up in the morning, let's, let's hang with well, his drag. He, oh, are you saying like that? Like, I mean, he he come from a completely different lifestyle, though. That's the thing. And actually, well, you, I know what you're trying to say. I get it. Like, yeah. in China especially... You don't, at, you don't look at China Mac as a, a sissy. I will say China has a lot of, like, for example, a lot of mafia. Mm -hmm. uh, triads. Triads. Yeah, they got... a you know they are some they're trying to push a certain type of male mm. but that doesn't mean it's right because there's not every male's going to be like that you know i mean in in hind, not in hindsight but like in actuality i think there's a broad spectrum of what masculinity can look like exactly so then you guys need to have the you need to showcase the aggressive one so yeah. that so that that stereotype that makes you guys look weak kind of like you know adjust see, a little see, bit see i'm agreeing up to that point like i'm agreeing that the fact that we should have more representation different representations of what an asian man is because there's so many different types there's mm -hmm. the nerdy asians there's the the, the gangster asians mm -hmm. there's the dumb asians you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so i'm glad i like having a different showcase but what china is trying to do right yeah. now is like no this is the only type of man you need to be strong manly uh smart hardworking, loyal to the red army Oh, a patriotic man is what yeah. they're trying to do. Yeah. Oh, well, so that's, that's a big that, part of that, too. That makes it a lot easier when you say patriotic. I, I respect that. <laughs> hey, they want, they want a man that's loyal to the country. A man that's upright. I, I don't know. I, th I think that that's just them trying to control every single part of what it means to be Chinese. Okay. So. All right, man. Shout out to the Chinese, man. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to the Chinese, man. One day I'll be over there. I've already was over there. Was you went Shang to Shanghai, right? I yeah. went to Shanghai. Went How was that, by the way? Shanghai's a nice place, man. They yeah. fuck with me over there. Really? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Good. All right, so we're coming, let's come back to Canada. Yes. You know, this great country that I call uh, home. 
And we're going to go tap into what's currently going on in Ontario and a little bit of Alberta. Mm -hmm. So recently it was just announced that uh, vaccine passports are coming into effect as of what, September 22nd. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to have to go into uh, places like uh, indoor dining, gyms, uh, theaters, mm -hmm. concerts, clubs, bars. And you're going to have to present a, uh, I guess, proof of vaccination with uh, I have government issue ID to kind of just corroborate that you did get your full vaccination and all that. And uh, a lot of people are kind of like, okay with this. And a lot of people are going like, what the f mm -hmm. Uh I, on the other hand, I look at it like this. There's no need. I, I, I believe there is, uh, uh, there is peace in ignorance. Me walking into a store and seeing a bunch of people for me to, automatically now know a bunch of the people that are in the store are all automatically vaccinated is unnecessary it shows a bit of exclusion segregation i like to walk into a place where it's like i don't know and that's i think that's a lot better that's a better society because i could have been inside a class with someone who had chlamydia hiv aids uh oh. Completely. Uh, who who probably had a disability that a or or a learning disability. But the thing is, those things those things are not necessarily uh, physically you know shown unless you tap into them and, and start to talk to them. But this right here, me walking to a club, you're gonna be walking to a club or no, it's not even walking to. You're gonna be walking to a fucking Kelsey's. You know, you're here with your girl. You walk to a fucking Kelsey's. You gotta show your proof of vaccination yes. to a fucking Kelsey's, bro. What that means that when you go into this restaurant, you know you're safe. It, does does it really mean? That? That's what the point of this passport is. It's the idea that like people should not, like, if they're trying to go somewhere, they want to feel safe. And when you're around with vaccinated people, you know you're good. But like, why? Okay, my thing is, the passport is unnecessary because it's, it's you're excluding a group of people because there of their be, choice. You have a freedom of choice, but you don't have freedom to consequences. I think that if you are trying, the, clearly the world is trying to fight this disease. The world you have fighting. Yeah, and the, here's the thing. You have the option mm -hmm. to not take it, but you are not free from the consequences from doing that because they're trying to, just because one person doesn't want to take the vaccine doesn't mean he's allowed to go to the same place where other people are vaccinated and then try to kind of mess it up for them too. But what I eat don't make you shit though. Sorry? You don't, you don't get it. But what I what what I do with my body shouldn't affect you in some type of way. So let's say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Also, I also want to talk about this too. The way that you have such a strong passion about pe keeping people vaccinated or getting people vaccinated, and I them, don't. <laughs> isn't that the, isn't this the same mindset that we use when in terms of like when the government now wants to impose laws on women's bodies? You know what I mean? Oh, now you're just trying to. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think it's it's, it's it's in the same vein. It's in the same vein. Because they, they can't fit well, I, they haven't gotten to that point yet. Yeah. But they can't they can't they haven't well they're also mandating people who work in places. So they're slowly creeping up into imposing certain restrictions and certain things that people of the citizens citizens of this country are going to have to do. The same way how women are fighting for liberation of their body, why are people as a collective fighting for liberation of their body in terms of what they want to take in and not take in? Especially with a vaccine that kind of just came in. Very, uh, very yep. shortly. I mean, okay. very, uh, very recently. You're trying to argue for the autonomy of the body. Like you have full control and that's... So why, why not? Why can't I argue for that? And why can't you agree with that? Because you don't want women, you don't want the government to tell women. No, of course so not. So why, but why? That's a completely different how, thing. how, sir? Okay, but how, people sir? People are literally dying. That's the, you're missing a huge part of the argument. And people would say the same thing. Women are out here ch killing children. And that's a huge thing. Yeah, but... Coronavirus is like a contagious disease. Like it's yes, that's a completely on, different thing. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. So stop okay, it. Stop it. Stop it. Don't told you to come in right now, man. <laughs> I had a good argument. Yeah, because <laughs> no, it was not giving. It. You're tr you're trying. It was to giving what it was supposed to give. The argument no. was giving what it was supposed you're, to give. The main to point is that it's a contagious virus. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the huge asterisk in all this argument. I'm tr you're trying to fight for the autonomy of the body, and you're putting completely two different topics. So hold on. Wouldn't the top, what, so autonomy of the body just isn't isn't linear? It depends. There's circumstances so, no, that are different. Question, Jeff. Is it linear or no? Say yes. It is. It is. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So why now is that when one thing is right into a conversation, it's kind of like, oh, whoa, whoa, they were doing too much. Because we're in unprecedented is, times. Huh? We're in unprecedented times. Yeah. That's why. And women been uh, and abortion's been happening okay, since the what? abortion. The main argument of abortion is religion. It's the fact that like it's sinful to do something like that, and they're trying to take control of another person's body. This is completely different. This is just like literally people are dying. And there's no if, ands, or buts. About about it.
That's the thing. I know you, what you're trying to push this whole autonomy of the body thing, but okay. it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, so it's not linear then. No. You're trying. No, no, no. Answer, What's answer. the thing you said a few episodes ago? Like answer, one, one plus, or you know what I mean? This ain't that and that. This ain't that this. this, yeah. No, I'm asking you. So it's not. So in linear, so you're that, you, by saying that, that means it's not linear. I guess not then. Okay, there. Thank you. Thank you. But so what? So Wait. what? So what happens with a different argument that has to do with an autonomy of a body when it comes to doing something else has no grounds or bounds on something else? Okay, first of all, I, I just want to. I think politics has a lot to do with this as well. And Identity politics. Well, just okay. Let me explain this. Okay, so you're trying to. It's. You I, don't know, I don't know why you get into like a headache, Jeff. No, because it's just I cannot believe you're putting two and two together. Let me explain. But it makes sense, though. No, it's no, true. It, it is linear, but it, the point is that it's unprecedented times. Like, we've never been in, a, well, we've obviously been in times like this in history. And what did they do? Give people vaccines. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's just, it's just that. It's simple as that. Mm -hmm. And just people are dying. Like, I, I don't know how much times I have to emphasize that. That's a completely different thing. The other, the reasoning for the pro-life or pro-choice is based on religion and just having a control of like because people consider well, it's not just people religion. consider those, just people consider like the but, minute a uh, semen uh, infertilizes an egg, that's a living being, and you are killing off a living being. So people are dying, Jeff. People but, are dying. But the, people are dying, Jeff. Okay, Apollo so, prepared for this I, today. Listen. People are dying, Jeff. Okay. Okay. Say, tell me, tell me otherwise. Okay. Tell me I'm not, tell, no, tell no, me no, 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 no. But that's dying. your interpretation of what qualifies as a human being. So, so, that's a whole so, different topic. There we talking go, about, Jeff. Yeah, talking let's, about let's go. Let's get to it. Oh, let's get to it. No, 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 no. Let's get to it, Jeff. Let's get to it. Wait, where do you stand on this? So you're saying as soon as it enters, it's a human being? No, no, no. Just go back to COVID. No, he's trying to go there. He's trying to go there. He's pushing the comparison. There's a comparison there. We're not it's not. Not. It's if something is linear, it's linear. <laughs> I don't like. I don't understand how you cannot see that there's a huge difference between people dying and then just like the whole religious factor of like this is just you, this is the I like way. The fact be. that you don't say people are dying in terms of a coronavirus, but when it comes to abortion, then it's like okay, religion. because not everyone thinks that the fetus is a kid. But we're not yes. going to talk about this. Yes. We're not gonna. <laughs> we're like going to go back to covid and we're going to talk right, about let's the go passports to passports yeah, all right and what i, I mean all right so you're down, for, you're down for segregation yeah see look at how you're trying to frame this and yeah, obviously right. so no. you're down for segregation let's talk about it so like, i want to hear your points on segregation let's, in terms of the vaccine passport <laughs> go, 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 no go. what okay listen listen listen, listen. i i'll sit, i'm going to stand on my two feet on this yeah. i think that you have a freedom of choice but you don't you also have uh you don't you're not free to consequences you don't have the freedom to consequences mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so if you're choosing not to uh t take the vaccine go ahead mm -hmm. be my guest i don't care mm -hmm. but well, then you, you you should not be able to go somewhere mm -hmm. and jeopardize that for other people as mm -hmm. well. Stay at home. So it's like it's like when black people went to white places and it's like you bringing down the you know the property you value. Are really you're trying down to the property reach value. Up, you're making people feel unsafe for the white women clutching their pearls and their purses. Is that the same? It, are, like, it sounds like the same thing to me, Jeff. You're they don't it sounds like the equal same together. Thing. It's completely different different circumstances. You tell me it's, those you're things are not which, mutually exclusive. We're talking about lives and the deaths of people. That is the huge part you're missing in this I'm, whole I'm, conversation. I'm so I am understanding what you're talking about. I'm understanding what you're talking about. Yes, people are dying. Yes. There has to be a part of me and part of you that feels some type of compassion towards that. Right? Listen. But that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the exclusion of our population going to things that they once saw normal. This can't be the new normal. If you want to take normal, the shot. Is, is segregation a new normal, Jeff? If you want to answer the question, Jeff, no, is no, segregation a new normal? You're Jeff? setting me up with a question that does not equate to the, what I'm trying to <laughs> but say. But this is what it is, though, right? It isn't. It's, you're segregating okay, wait, people. Jeff, let's try this. Like, do you think that it's like a form of segregation? Like, do you think it's scary, like a little bit, that the government can mandate this? I think because I have to emphasize the whole unprecedented thing because it's different. Okay, we have to do this. Is a, can you answer your question straight on? No, I'm not yeah, going. No, yeah, actually, try. Do you think <laughs> it's a little bit scary? Yes or no? Or that the government can have that much a control? Yeah, and say you cannot go in this place because you're not vaccinated. Do you think that is going too far, or do you think it's 100 percent okay? I think it depends on the circumstances. This, this circumstance, is a, on this, this circumstance, is real life on right this now. circumstance, this is like a hypothetical then, right now. This then, is real life. On this circumstance, you think it's okay? I do think so. Okay, so you guys are not going to ever reach a middle ground. So no. we're gonna move on no. to Alberta. <laughs> I, 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 I just He's want okay this with it. virus to go away, and, and you I want, think that this is gonna help that? That's well, this is the best solution we have now because to, to 
to what to prevent people walking into a gym to Kelsey's okay. listen, <laughs> I, I think listen if you want to do that shit then get the damn virus so what do you guys I mean, think about Alberta oh, sorry huh? what do you guys think about Alberta giving people a hundred dollars to get a vaccine I mean, well, I, I've seen those types of incentives everywhere. I think uh, in America, they were trying to give out Dunkin' Donuts. Too. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Which, that was funny. So you do you think that's kind of weird? I, I think that just speaks to how they think of the people being stupid because mm -hmm. they think that they have to incentivize to do that to take a shot i'm more i'm more co-signed alberta is incentivizing people to get 100 giving people 100 dollars to get vaccines than ontario mandating a vaccine passport because at least they're doing their best to encourage the the further vaccination of their population within inside so that region you want to so instead of excluding the people who decide not okay. to get it and further alienating them from the rest of society since you like trapping me in scenarios, I'm gonna try and trap you here. Hey Jeff, you, on, you, you clearly said that you are okay with vaccine passport and you feel weird that Ontario, Alberta is incentivizing people hundred dollars to get a vaccine. No, I don't think it's weird. I think it just speaks of how they think of the people, first of all. Okay. Number two, the reason, the situation and why they're trying to do the vaccine passports is they're trying to vent this situation. Say someone does come mm -hmm. who isn't vaccinated and he's carrying the damn virus mm -hmm. and he's going to affect someone mm -hmm. who the virus is going to hit and they, it re results in a death. Mm -hmm. So you're okay with that. In 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 that circumstances are is that person that's unvaccinated affecting another person that is unvaccinated? Yeah. See, I knew that I knew he was going to say that cuz it's true. Like <laughs> it kind of yeah, because like if a person goes in that's unvaccinated, why should the vaccinated be scared, you know? Yeah. That's their that's kind of their argument. Which like you know what? I'm, I'm gonna be honest right here. I'm, I'm having a brain fart right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think this through right now. Hey man, I'm. That's true. They I, are vaccinated. I'm for the people for yeah. real. They are vaccinated. I, That's the thing, you know. I I, I want to encourage people. If people feel like it, they need to get the vaccine to get the vaccine, mm -hmm. but I'm not on the. On, I'm not co-signing the fact yeah. that you're alienating the people who chose not to get it because up until this pre unprecedented time, mm -hmm. there is anti-vaxxers that we may or may not know that were living life freely, passing through, and we did not know that they didn't have none of the polio shots, the mump shots, the hepatitis mm -hmm. C or B shots, and they were just cohabitating the same oxygen and space that we were. Ignorantly, we did not know. But now we're alienating those people who chose not to get uh, uh, the recent vaccine that just came into, you know, into the world. Right. And I don't, I don't find, I don't find that, I don't find that normal. I don't like that being the new normal. I like the new being the new normal. Me being back in a, in a, in a somewhat ignorant state of mind in terms of what my, where my location is, in terms of people who may or may not have gotten vaccines. Like it doesn't really matter. Like up until this point, I never had any type of de deadly illness. And you, I'm pretty sure you haven't no. either. And we can also talk about them moving the goalpost from yeah. like they said, if 75 percent are vaccinated, then it'll be, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah. And then they moved it to like 85. Yeah. And it's like, okay. We're, we're in the 80s, right? Yeah. We're in the 80s. We are. And, yeah. And Israel is like one of the most vaccinated states. And I don't know. It's Apparently, they're not doing well. So, yeah. You know, there's a lot of questions to ask about whether it's worth kicking people out of Kelsey's, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Kelsey's, bro. Uh, the gym. You know, the, the place where people are supposed to go work out yeah. to stay healthy. I think then, what do you think of people who are choosing not to vaccinate themselves? Are they are they not contributing to the problem though? I mean, if they gotten sick, I think they are contributing to the problem. But if they haven't gotten sick this whole pandemic time, then are they really contributing to the problem? Are you remember? Forget no, I'm, I'm saying so. Am I saying something right? I'm saying something. If I've never committed a crime, am I committing to the crime right? You not not no, no Jeff, 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 is, Jeff. No, 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 no. Hold on. Am hold I on, right on, though? On. Am I right wait. though? If yeah. I Jeff, am I right? But you, the uh, Jeff, am I right, please? If I never committed a crime, I might commit to the crime one. <laughs> I think maybe what Jeff could respond and say to that yes. is that he's like, yes, is, <laughs> is that um, you don't necessarily know if you had COVID and you don't know if you're yeah. passing it. I think mm -hmm. that's a fair point. You know? Yeah, that's, so. what, that's exactly what's funny. <laughs> Yo, Jeff, Jeff couldn't do it. <laughs> Well, no, I, that's, that isn't what I'm trying to say, though. Well, you can say, I, I, you know what? A better argument you could say is like people who don't want to, to choose not to be vaccinated, they're potentially, potentially could contribute to the, the rise in cases of COVID because of their unvaccinated selves. I would respect that because that's yeah. more on a, on, a, on a basis that it may or may not happen to them. But the, the fact that it could is what we are trying to uh, reduce. That's me helping you. <laughs> well, no, I just, I think that, uh, 
for me, what I'm trying to say is I do want this virus to be gone. Same and here. I, yeah. And we are at this point where we have to push the vaccines, the passports, because in the beginning, we were not subscribed to doing it in the beginning, like properly. It's kind of it's kind of weird that you kind of like shit on China for doing what they're doing. And then when Canada does something that out of Chinese, China's China. Uh, no, it's not China was doing that. It was Taiwan and But like, you know what Australia. I'm saying? Like in terms of like how they're aggressively pl uh, imposing rules. I don't think it's aggressively matter. Rather this is pretty aggressive, Jeff. I think it's more of the fact that the science are pushing the, us to go in a certain direction and we were not following it in the beginning. All right. Are you for science? And my four science, I know my, I, what I learned in grade 10 biology, I know that once you catch a virus or a sickness, you can't get the same thing again because your body's built up the antibodies. If you do get sick again, it's not the same disease, it's not the same virus that attacks you. It's something that may have been mutated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With that being said, if you got the COVID shot for a particular type of strain, then that strain that may inflict the uh, uh, thousands of millions of people's bodies prior and it comes to you, it may not affect you. But that mutated virus that yeah. comes to you is something totally different that your body may not, will have to fight off itself. I think that's what Jeff should have brought up. The Delta variant, I think, is the main reason why they're trying to push it because the shot doesn't cover it, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But what are we going to do? Get a shot for every variant? But you could say that the people who are unvaccinated are spread, or apparently the people who are unvaccinated are spreading the Delta variant. Yeah. So. But also at the same time, I want to just say the numbers that I've seen are saying that um, they're really trying to they're really trying to frame the narrative that the unvaccinated people are going to be the the root of the problem of the of suddenly uh, a skyrocketing amount of COVID cases, which makes no sense to me because how could before when we had a very le uh, small uh, percentage of people vaccinated, the COVID cases were at a certain level. So more people vaccinated and the higher uh, level of percentage of people vaccinate, unvaccinated getting the, the COVID cases, the surge up. It kinda, kinda, it, that to me, for someone that does a little bit of math, uh, that's kind of alarming to me. And uh, I'm trying to figure, trying to make sense of that. You know what I have to say? I think that what I don't like are the people that aren't getting vaccinated going into the hospital after and taking up the like resuscitator or the whatever the machines oxygen machines for the people who you know were vaccinated and end up getting sick or something yeah. I don't think that's fair and I think that's a problem that people should talk about more because and then you see them on TikTok crying like guys get vaccinated I didn't get vaccinated now I can't breathe mm -hmm. and yeah that's but I think you know yeah. what I, I want to end off on this point I think that when this pandemic started People were proud to say they had COVID. Yeah. They're still proud to say they have COVID. Yeah. yeah. Oh, f f weird f people. Yeah. they are go on the internet. I have COVID, guys. Yeah. Joe they're Rogan like, did that recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, he did. They, Joe they, Rogan yeah. did do that. They, yeah. they, they, people are, were proud to say they have Corona, Corona what was it? Corona Coronavirus? Yeah, coronavirus. COVID-19. COVID-19, yeah. They're, they were proud Sir. to say they had COVID-19. Now, with the... With the introduction of the vaccines especially with the branding the moderna and pfizer astrazeneca johnson and johnson people are now proud to go out there and show their vaccination records yeah, on pfizer instagram stories mm -hmm. yeah, yeah hashtagging themselves saying they're pfizer princess moderna mm -hmm. babies you know and i feel like with all that added fuel of now exposing your medical health there out there just willy-nilly for some instagram likes social media intention you allowed the government to go like oh whoa 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 you guys are just willingly just giving away this information might as well like put in a vaccine password because you guys are already doing our work for us people you would walk up to people there's weird people out there walk up to people and go like yo i'm already two times vaccinated bro like i didn't ask you why you show why you even mm -hmm. why you even forfeiting that information just willy-nilly it, 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 people have been brainwashed into believing that they need to now announce what they are when we lived we used to live in a world where people never even thought that to be a significant part of the conversation or even asking someone and that this vaccine is the end like if you yeah. get it it will for sure end yeah that's what people think which yeah, is that's not scary true because it's not it's, it's not still not ongoing true. it is still that's ongoing. what people think and that's because of the narrative that the government is spreading exactly so i'm not a fan of none of this stuff yeah this is the conservative government that's doing this though correct this is the doug ford ontario we, government we making money with doug <laughs> We're making money with Doug. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. So are you happy with him? Then? Well, it's not the conservative government, isn't yeah, it? Well, like Ontario's just, it's Ontario's government. government. Oh. This is the Ontario passports. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. That is really interesting because yeah. I don't think if I were before this situation happened, I wouldn't think that he'd have. I this think stance. there's money in it. 
Yeah. I think I heard there's that. Always, there's always yeah, money. like five. Like, yeah, there's some money in it. There's money, always money in it. Yeah. Well, hey man, uh, I do. I feel like people will be complain, uh, compliant with this. I feel like like everything. There's always going to be a group of people, a group of companies that are going to go like, hey, bro, I'm not. I'm. A, I don't see nothing if you don't see nothing. If you keep it to yourself, I keep it to myself. And that's how a lot of this business is going to go. And then there's going to obviously going to be a black market in terms of people making counterfeit. Yeah. Yeah, they're like already that. out there. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's like. Right. Wasn't there a doctor who was uh, got charged or something because he was creating like fake vaccination vaccination cards or something? Shout to him, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is a side note, quick, but I think either Moderna or Pfizer started like a trial for AIDS. Yeah, no, it was uh, Johnson and Johnson actually oh, in the Johnson field. Johnson. Oh, it failed. Yeah, it failed. Oh. It failed. Which yeah. it's also a lot, a lot of, uh, surprising to me because um, AIDS been around, HIV has been around for much longer, and MRA. Uh, testing has been around since uh 2005 and yeah. up until 2021 and they're doing trials yeah. and it's failing yeah i mean shout out to prep for helping everyone out though <laughs> all right how we want to end this jeff <laughs> the, we're good yeah all right well thank you so much for listening don't forget to hit the subscribe button like the video and all that and we're now on spotify and apple and all of those other platforms oh yeah. yes for really. all those people that have been looking up for us and they couldn't find us on apple uh, apple uh, podcast spotify google play mm -hmm. we are there all right so you know uh let this let our let us be the audio enjoyment on your way to work school or any other endeavors that you're doing without in throughout your life Yes, and next time Katie Atu will be here, hopefully. All right, and this has been The Echo with your host, Apollo PN. Jeffrey. See you next time. See ya.